Hey coach, uh, thanks for doing this. Just well, let's start off. What are the Saints getting with Spencer Rattler? I think they're getting a guy with a uh, huge upside, fantastic person, somebody that I obviously, you know, have been around since 2019 when we were together at Oklahoma. So um, I think he's just he, – he's been through so much adversity. His story is – is uh, he's weathered some storms from what happened at Oklahoma, some of the adversity he felt uh, dealt with here at South Carolina with injuries and, and whatnot. But he's extremely talented. He's extremely hardworking. He's humble. And uh, I know he's eager to get to work out there. What do you remember from him, like, when you guys – when he transferred um, to South Carolina, just at the end of that Oklahoma experience, what, what was he kind of like and how did you kind of see him maybe take that and, and learn from it? Yeah, um, you know, I was fortunate that uh, we were together at Oklahoma. I've known Spencer since he was a senior, I guess junior in high school, his junior year um, when we were recruiting him at Oklahoma. I saw him come into Oklahoma. I think that I don't want to speak for him, but I would imagine coming to Oklahoma when he did was a great experience because our starting quarterback when he got there was Jalen Hurts. So he was able to see how Jalen acclimated coming from Alabama to Oklahoma. And I would imagine that helped Spencer when he came from Oklahoma to South Carolina. And then certainly when he chose South Carolina, um, you're talking about a guy that going into the 2021 season, he was everybody's projected number one pick in the NFL draft. And he was on the, you know, one of the favorites to win the Heisman Trophy. And the season didn't turn out the way that he wanted. But from talking to people at Oklahoma, they had nothing but great things to say about him. Uh, how he handled that situation with Caleb and, and losing his job. And then it, it spoke volumes about our program that a guy like Spencer Rattler would choose to come here. So that was a big deal when Spencer Rattler made the announcement to come to the South, uh, come join our program. And then when he came in, he was exactly like I thought he would be uh, hardworking, went right to work, didn't really say a whole lot, just tried to earn the respect of his teammates. And he did. He was a two time captain here at Carolina and uh, and elevated our program and led us to some big-time wins over the last two years. Coach, obviously, you know, you can't read a story about him. You can't read a scouting report about him where, where, where it talks about, you know, the, the perception of him early on, the adversity he faced. Is is it fair that that sticks with him or, you know, is it overhyped or, or is it something he really did have to grow from and, and, and that is part of his good story? Um, You know, I think, I think the biggest knock on him are people that I think the Netflix show that he did, which I've never watched in my life, but I've heard about this Netflix show that didn't portray him in a good light. But I can't imagine many people at the age of 17 would be proud of a Netflix show that was done on them. And then particularly with that, when, when, when you're part of a reality show like that, the producers, they can twist and shape the narrative however they want to make it look a, look makes some people look a certain way. I never watched it. All I knew was what I saw with my own eyes. And I saw the way that people uh, uh, respected him and liked him in the football facility at Oklahoma. Uh, I know about his, I know his family and how grounded he is. His mom and dad are awesome. Um, if, if his dad ever called me during his time here at Carolina, it was only to thank me for the experience that Spencer was having at South Carolina. And uh, his mom and dad are fantastic. Whole family's great. He's great, you know. So whatever that narrative is on the outside, if people are basing that off of something that he did at the age of 17, then in my opinion, shame on them. Uh, he's grown so much and, and has the respect of so many. And then we, we just talked to Coach Loggins about uh, those scouting reports also talk about how pro-ready, quote-unquote, his arm is, the system he played in, um, the throws he can make. I mean, is that true that the, the 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 talent he's working with is is even more pro ready than than we'll find with a lot of guys making that transition from college? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's uh, I think mentally he's going to be ahead of the time because he's really played in three different systems. He played uh, in Lincoln Riley's system at Oklahoma. Uh, his first year here in 2022, we had a, a different offensive coordinator, Marcus Satterfield. He's at Nebraska now. And then Dow Loggins came in, and Marcus had spent some time in the NFL with the Panthers. Dow's obviously his whole career has been in the NFL. And we didn't change a lot when um, when Dow came in, but there were some differences and some terminology and how he was coached and things like that as well. And Dow's a longtime coordinator and quarterback in the NFL, quarterback coach in the NFL, so that'll help Spencer. 
So mentally, I think he's going to be farther along than most quarterbacks because of what he's been exposed to. But then the talent speaks for itself. I mean, he can make any throw on the field. He's made some miraculous throws that, and imp- not miraculous, but impressive throws over the last couple of years. He can throw on the run. Um, and he's a better athlete than people give him credit for, too. Um, whatever his 40 time was, 4 9 or whatever I heard, he's a better athlete than people give him credit for. He's, he's uh, made some runs here in the last couple of years and, and for us. And I think he's got just a big upside and his best football is in front of him. Coach, was he a, a different type of player at South Carolina? Was he a little bit more relaxed? Did you see that in him? Uh, compared to Oklahoma, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Did he, I mean, uh, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Um, to me, that that's one of Spencer's greatest strengths is his just his steadiness. Um, he doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. I think that's an amazing quality in a quarterback and what, you know, Coach Allen wants out of his quarterbacks there in New Orleans. Uh, and that's Spencer. So to me, he was very much the same guy. Was he – he was probably a little bit, you know, more battle tested, seasoned, mature, whatever. That's what, you know, adversity and, and years will do to you. But uh, I don't I never once thought he was more relaxed. I mean, he's a guy I've said this before publicly. I mean, he dealt with adversity at Oklahoma before, you know, everybody went, makes a big deal out of getting benched um, by, uh, to uh, Caleb. But people forget, you know, when Spencer took over as the starting quarterback at Oklahoma, He was replacing Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, and Jalen Hurts. And then he takes over as the starting quarterback, and we at Oklahoma, with him as our starting quarterback, we immediately lose our first two Big 12 games that year. We lose to Kansas State at home, and then we go up on the road and we lose to Iowa State. So here's this young freshman quarterback that's replacing three pros, and he starts out one and two, but he never flinched. We went and played Texas that year. Coach Riley actually benched him in the first half of the Texas game in 2019, uh, or excuse me, 2020. And then he put Spencer back in the game. He leads us to like a four overtime victory and then doesn't lose a game the rest of his career at Oklahoma. Leads us to a Big 12 championship. Then the next year, all the hype is about him going into the season. He loses his job. But throughout all that, in 2020, the highs and the lows, uh, coming into South Carolina, I think that's one of his greatest strengths is is uh, uh, he he was the same guy all along, and, and I didn't really notice the difference when he was here. What about the Saints have working on this offseason installing this new wide zone uh, offensive approach? What do you think would make Spencer a good fit in that style of a system? Uh, you know, that's a better question for, you know, Coach Allen and those guys. I, I just think with, with Spencer, you know, he's been exposed to different run concept concepts. He's been exposed to different, you know, passing concepts. And, and he's a guy that I think just can do a lot, um, um, being able to manage the run game, manage the pass game, and, and uh, do what the Saints need him to do offensively. What type of growth did you see in him on the field, specifically kind of the last two years at South Carolina? I think a lot, you know, he really committed to uh, getting in here and, and our system is completely different than what he fate or what the system he ran at Oklahoma and uh, our Oklahoma with Coach Riley. Uh, so he really committed to getting in here and I think off the field, learning our system for one, but just really trying to understand defenses and what they were doing. I mean, I spent all my time or most of my time in the quarterback meetings here at Carolina and every time I walked in there, I mean, he's. He's in there all the time. He's taking notes. He's on his iPad and and really work to understand the game better. And then on the field, I think just probably the biggest thing, and he continued to work on the fundamental part of it and and getting better there with Dow. And then just getting – he's grown so much because, to me, the adversity he's faced here. I mean, he was – our offense last season – uh, our offensive line was decimated by injuries. And we lost six offensive linemen to season-ending injuries last season. Uh, we started three, or excuse me, two true freshmen on the offensive line last season in what I consider the toughest conference in America that has the best defenses in America. So it wasn't an easy uh, road to hoe for him last season. But I know from talking to a lot of NFL teams. That's one thing that really resonated with him was just how he handled that. You never saw him getting frustrated. You never saw him pointing fingers. Uh, He was positive. Um, 
you know, one of my favorite moments from last season is he throws the game-winning touchdown pass against Kentucky late in the game. And on that play, we had a true freshman running back that hadn't really played much throughout the season that was in the game because of injuries. And he picked up a blitzing linebacker, and that allowed Spencer to step up in the pocket and throw the touchdown pass to Xavier Leggett. And, uh, you know, our in-house media team caught it. And as soon as that plays over, you see Spencer come up to the freshman running back and telling him what a great job that was on that play to pick up that linebacker. And that's just who he is. And uh, I know that impressed a lot of teams. And and um, and that's the kind of guy the Saints are getting. Coach, he uh, obviously competed in the Senior Bowl, was the game MVP. How important was that for him? I think it was – yeah, I think it was great. You know, it's – him uh, got such great respect for Jim Nagy and, the, and what the Senior Bowl does. But to me, that was a great – testament to Spencer um the week that he had and how much he impressed teams that week which shocked me even more that you know he was still sitting there in the fifth round because of the performance he had down in Mobile uh that week I was down there at practice I think on either Tuesday or Wednesday and so many NFL teams are coming up to me just talking about what a great week he was having and then the culminated with the game that he had so that was a big opportunity for him on that stage in front of NFL personnel to throw to other NFL, future NFL players, and uh, be exposed to an NFL coaching staff or part of a coaching staff. And I think that was a great week for him and will do nothing but aid, aid in his development. When you land a talent like Spencer at South Carolina, was there temptation to change your offense to what Oklahoma was running? Or did you think kind of maybe like a, a fresh approach would be good for him? No, uh, no, great question. Um, no, I mean, we were going to do what we wanted to what we did systematically. I mean, when he, when he came in, uh, 2021 was my first season here. And then Spencer came in in 2022. So we weren't going to completely change the offense one player terminology wise. Now we did implement some things that I knew that, you know, he was comfortable with at Oklahoma. Uh, we did implement some things even before he got here. I mean, we had plays that in 2021 before Spencer even got here that we that I took from Oklahoma that I said, this stuff's really, really good. And we need to, we need to utilize it. I mean, we have plays in our offense called Boomer. We have a play called Sooner. We have a play called Kyler. We have a play called uh, CD uh, uh, named after CD Lamb. So there's concepts that when Spencer got to Carolina, he already knew I could just say, Hey Spencer, we call this Boomer, but at Oklahoma, we called it whatever. And, um, that probably helped the process a little bit, but he jumped right in, never asked us to make any exceptions for him. He wanted to learn what we did, but certainly like any coach, you always want to do the things that your quarterback is uh, is comfortable with, and that's what we tried to do when he got here. Coach, have you reached out to him yet today? And if so, what was that conversation like? Yeah, I called him uh, I called him yesterday before the draft just to see how he was doing and, and – uh, you know, I fully expected him to go last night. And so I called him yesterday just to kind of check in and, and say hello. And uh, we had a good conversation yesterday. And then today, as soon as he got drafted, um, uh, about or about within five minutes, I uh, I called him. So I don't know. You guys work fast. I don't know. He told me if he may have been on with you guys. He was on a Zoom and said he'd hit me back whenever he cleared up. And then I told him I knew he was slammed with stuff. And and uh, to call me whenever he had time. But super excited for him. Like I said, a guy I've known since 2019 and, and or since I, who I've been with since 2019, but have known longer than that. But um, really excited for him. And he mentioned uh, knowing Archie Manning. Had he ever brought that up to you or, or their relationship? Yeah, I think that's one thing. It's, I should have mentioned that too. Um, he went and did the uh, the Manning Passing Academy, I want to say in the summer of 2022, I think. And um, I know that was an amazing experience for him. And Archie has texted and called me in the past uh, about Spencer and how impressive he was. I still have a picture on my phone of that uh, Archie and I think Peyton both sent me the same picture. And is it was of... Uh, uh, Peyton's son, I believe, with Spencer at that camp. And uh, they sent it to me that summer, which was really pretty cool. Um, and I know the what the the how impressed the, the, the Mannings were, who I have so much respect for, how impressed they were with Spencer at that camp. But I remember our strength coach telling me 
here at Carolina that when Spencer came back from the Manning Passing Academy, I don't want to say he was a different person, but he um, he really grew from that time at the Manning and Passing Academy, particularly as a leader. And I remember our strength coach coming telling me later that summer that man, ever since Spencer came back from the Passing Academy, he's like he's just grown so much as a leader, where he way he carries himself as a quarterback. And uh, I think that's a d- directly attributed to uh, to uh, that time with the Mannings. Yeah, I mean, when you go through adversity like he went through, just to have someone of that caliber to kind of lean on, how important is it for QB's development specifically for him? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a it's a lonely position. And, uh, you know, I tell him, I've told him before, it's the quarterback, the offensive coordinator, and the head coach that typically get the most credit and the most blame uh, when things go well or don't go well. And uh, he's done it on a high, high level on, and, and on a major stage ever since he got to Oklahoma and then coming to South Carolina. So without a doubt, um, to have people that you can lean on, that position can sometimes be lonely. So to be able to reach out to other guys like he's able to is certainly a huge, uh, huge resource.